Hey everyone, it's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm. Today is October 11th. I feel like we are now consistently in flannel weather. So the weather is gorgeous. And this time of year is perfect for starting ranunculus for where I live in New Jersey in zone 6B. So I thought I would give you a bit of an update because I'm not just going to overwinter ranunculus, I'm doing a couple of experiments and then I had a surprise that popped up. So short video, but thought I would take you through some of this stuff in case of it's something that you've been also wondering if you could do where you are. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I am in my second year of flower farming. I mentioned I am in New Jersey. So we are on the cusp of being able to overwinter ranunculus. Last year we had a really mild winter, so it made for a great winter to overwinter. But that being said, there are some people who live just like about an hour south of me, like in Philadelphia, Jenny Love. She is able to overwinter her ranunculus in caterpillar tunnels. So I don't have caterpillar tunnels built, I just use frost cloth, so something fabric like an agarbon, and then sometimes I'll do a second layer of regular thick greenhouse like plastic. So um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me because I do constant updates on what that looks like. And let me show you just high level the things that I plan on doing with ranunculus this year. Let's start first with the corms. So I have bags and bags of corms uh, and I am selling corms for those who are interested so I'll post the link below but I'm selling basically uh, the Aviv variety so this is the Picote series I've got Picote cafe orange pink and we've got some more traditional colors like purple rose white uh, the pink was really popular so it was gone but I'm starting out by pre-sprouting these and this is what that process looks like so nothing fancy here. I'm only starting, I think this is 30 corms in here. So in some water for three hours-ish, I do change the water out every like couple of hours or so. So maybe just once in between. Um, honestly, if you don't change it, it's totally fine. But once you're done soaking the corms, uh, it's gonna look like this. After you finish soaking the corms, one thing you wanna make sure you do is you don't over soak because they will rot. You're really just trying to get them plump and uh, start them out of dormancy. But once you're done soaking, there's two routes. One, you can what we call pre-sprout them, which is put them in some sort of mixture. So it could be potting soil, it could be like peat, coconut core, something that's a medium that's gonna hold the moisture without it getting too wet and allowing it to sprout. And then the second thing is you can just plant them directly into the ground or into a pot. And that's the method that I prefer to do because obviously you skip some time from a labor perspective, but then also from a timing perspective in terms of not upsetting the roots and giving the plant potential transplant shock. In the spring, it's really hard to do this, uh, to plant directly from the soaking to the ground because the ground is still too cold, it's still too wet in a lot of areas, but in the fall, it is totally possible for you to just put it directly into the ground, and that's what I do. But this is a great segue for me to now talk about the three things that I am doing with my ranunculus this year. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm growing these for the winter. So these are in the pots that will be their home for the next three to four months, hopefully. And right now I would say that these are about, we'll call it two and a half, almost three weeks in from the moment I soak them to now. And what you can see is they've put on some tremendous growth. So these over here, most of them are actually um, tes tesalote variety. I have a couple of Aviv in here. Fortunately, all my tesalote is sold out. The corms are a bit bigger, um, but they are also more expensive. And I always say, if you've never grown ranunculus before, there's really nothing wrong with growing the cheaper type. Um, they are also bred for cut flowers, so Aviv is that cheaper type. And then once you have a good handle of growing Aviv, then graduate onto the more expensive corms. But if you've never grown ranunculus, I think it's a bit ridiculous to spend a few bucks per corm um, because they are such a tricky crop. But anyway, so what's gonna happen is these over here in the pots as well as these, um, so it's just one per pot. Uh, this is a bit small of pot, but I do wanna see if I can 
still get blooms out of a size like this because you can tell it's just very space efficient. Um, and then where they're gonna go is they're gonna go into this, this is an insulated pole barn uh, garage type of structure. It parks our vehicles as well as the tractor. Uh, and I'm gonna string some lights underneath here and put them underneath over here. And I would say that they'll have to go in probably after Thanksgiving to this area. And this area will stay a happy like 50 to 60 degrees at night since it is insulated and there are windows so that it can gain some heat uh, and thermal mass during the day. So basically they're gonna come in here and chill in the winter. And then assuming that they're still pumping out blooms, then uh, later on I might actually move them into the basement. Now I am doing a very, very small trial of this, uh, especially because once I do move them into the basement, I'm very nervous about introducing aphids into my growing space there because that's my tulip, my winter tulip growing space. And the tulips are my main crop. I mean, I'm gonna do thousands of them. So we're gonna see how it goes in the garage and I am doing them in quote unquote successions. So right now I have something like 17 um, and I'm gonna do like another 30 or so. And I think one of the things that I've learned is that you wanna give the ranunculus a little bit more room in the pot. So I have these bigger pots that um, they're probably, uh, I would say like two gallon pots and I would put three plants in there at most. I've seen people cram ranunculus into crates. Uh, they'll cram like nine. When uh, Hank from Ownings was actually talking to a group of us uh, about fall ranunculus, he was saying that they put just one ranunculus per crate. Uh, but I also know that Flower Hill, or not Flower Hill Farm, Little Farmhouse Flowers uh, also grows ranunculus indoors and they use gallon pots. And I think they put one per gallon pot and I've seen them put a few per crate. So more than one way to skin the cat, more than one way to grow ranunculus. A lot of this is really just about experimenting right now. All right, so that's method number one. And if things go well, then I should be able to achieve blooms sometime around Christmas, maybe a little bit after in the new year. And that will be just kind of like complement to the winter tulips that I have. Uh, the other thing that I learned from Hank Ownings is that the seedling phase or just like when the ranunculus are really small, they're a lot more forgiving with the soil temperature. So the soil temperature could be in that range where normally it would trigger dormancy in its adult phase, but in its younger stage, it's a lot more forgiving. So if you wanted to start ranunculus in like August, you could have done it. And that's what some other people did. There's like a group of us who are trying to see if we could grow ranunculus off season. So they have like structures and stuff. I don't have structures. And honestly, I didn't have my quorms in. I was a little bit preoccupied with cleaning up the field. So that's why I opted to try to do winter ranunculus. But basically my takeaway was it's a lot easier to pre-sprout now because the weather is perfect and from a day length perspective ranunculus actually prefer that shorter day length they want like eight to i think like 10 hours maybe 12 hours of light once you go above that it will initiate flowering but the flowering might be on thinner stems there might be less buds so uh that's another reason for trying to grow ranunculus uh, in the shoulder seasons, if not winter, because then you can supplement light and then uh, you can obviously control when those lights are on or off. All right, so let's get to it. The second method that was unexpected in terms of what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you right now. So this area over here, you can tell from the hoops was covered before. This is where my ranunculus in the spring was. And then I ended up interplanting straw flower just as ranunculus were starting. And I've been able to more or less cut off of these straw flower for, I would say from midsummer till now. Now, what I didn't realize was that some of my ranunculus would start sprouting again. And I didn't pull any of the corms out because I was too lazy, um, but they just started sprouting on their own. So there's a lot of stuff in here in terms of weed. There's like, what is this, like moss growing, but they're happy. Got one over here, one over here, a nice big one over here. I've got a lot of random ranunculus coming up. I mean, it's just, there's so many that I was like, all right, I have to keep this area because I was originally going to clear out this entire space 
and really focus growing over there and certain sections that are getting perennialized over there and this section where the yarrow is um, because I wanted to be able to get the tractor in here to dump soil. I wanted to do some more raised beds types of setting because there's so many weeds. I spent more time weeding this year than growing. So I was like, I might as well grow in a smaller space that's more manageable than grow in this big space and really have the same output because of the weeds. So long story short, I'm going to keep this area and I'm going to cover it. I'm going to take out the straw flower when they're done and then we're going to see how this goes. So I would love to know in the comments how this has worked out for you because I have read other people who have said that their second year flowering ranunculus that they left in the ground did not initiate buds. They had a lot of good foliage but no buds. Uh, I did not have the most fantastic crop. I mean, because I had a lot of ranunculus in this area, I was able to get quite a few blooms, um, but definitely not as many as you would have expected for the amount of ranunculus plants that I grew. And one of my biggest mistakes was I just didn't take care of them. I didn't fertilize them. And honestly, uh, that is totally fine because that was around the time when I had given birth to my daughter. So I had some other stuff on my mind, but I do know that they were completely under fertilized. So they didn't put on very good foliage growth and they were very, very weak. So let me know in the comments if you've done this before purposely or inadvertently and how are your blooms? So that brings me to the third thing that I'm doing with, with ranunculus and that is the more obvious one that most people do is overwintering. Um, and as I said before, overwintering here is not guaranteed and you do need to cover it and you do need to baby it. So let me show you though how I'm doing it because uh, again, I don't go through the pre-sprouting route. I just put them directly into the ground. So not the greatest looking area. But this is an area that was cleared of weeds. I smothered it with that panel over there. That's like siding panel from our pole barn garage. We had a lot left over and I was like, this is perfect. Like instead of using a tarp, let me use this. So did that, smothered it out and then put some grass clippings on top. So you can see this grass clipping is dried by now. And then basically just plucked or dug a small hole and then put the ranunculus corms in there and so we'll see what happens is this actually ranunculus no this is not ranunculus this is a viola i think so you can see there's still weeds in here despite the smothering um there are some very very persistent weeds like that is a god what is that i think that's a sorrel and it has rhizomes and it spreads so aggressively like over here you can see it's spreading so anyway that's why i like to keep it mulched to hinder that as much as possible the weed sprouting and then this will also help with the temperature regulation as the temperatures get cooler now i am going to have to do something like that over there the problem with this piping is that this is irrigation piping it's really cheap and therefore it's not going to hold snow load very well so I actually have a video on how I made this. I'm gonna link it above in case if you're interested. It does well in a climate where you don't get snow and you just need to put a cover over and it's a lot cheaper than buy, buying PVC piping. But what I may actually do is I may use wood and T posts to create a bit of like a square structure with a frame over the top and that way I can cover it more easily and then make sure that if there is snow load, uh, the thing doesn't collapse on top of the ranunculus that has sprouted. So that's it for now. I am definitely most excited for the winter ranunculus that will be growing in here. But even if it is a success, I don't know if I'm going to focus on that for the winter. And that's because ranunculus are relatively slow when it comes to growing because obviously uh, you need to sprout them and then they take at least 90 days from when you do that to flowering. So that's over three months. Now they will give you multiple stems and they will give you weeks of blooms. But when I compare that to the opportunity cost of what else I could be doing if I wanted to expand my winter tulips, my winter tulips, although they only give me one stem per bulb, since I treat them as an annual, I can turn them over within six weeks. So that goes from everything from rooting to growing, right? So in that span of six weeks, 
uh, that's like at least two and a half successions of tulips versus the ranunculus. So even though the ranunculus corn might be a little bit cheaper and I might be getting multiple blooms off of a single corn, net net, uh, because of how long it takes, it's still less revenue and less profitability than if I were to focus on tulips. And the more you scale tulips, obviously, the more economies of scale you have in terms of purchasing cheaper bulbs and all that good stuff. So this is more just for fun. Uh, if you are interested in purchasing my corms, I had mentioned I am selling the Aviv corms. So they come in the straight colors of white, purple, rose, uh, and then we're out of pink. So then the other colors are the Picote series. They're still, I believe, Aviv. And so those are cafe, orange, and pink. And those are really cool, for, cool colors because they've got like almost like variegation on their leaves. It's kind of hard to explain, but I think that those are just super, super unique. Um, my goal with these corms is to provide wholesale like pricing for the smaller grower and what that means is i like all the corms are definitely below a dollar including shipping so even if you were to purchase uh 25 corms it would be 23.99 about i i believe all in including shipping um there's options for mixes so you don't have to just get one color and i would say this is a good option if you're growing anywhere from like 25 to 250 ranunculus and you want a mix of colors you want ranunculus that is bred for cut flowers uh, and i always say that like when you start hitting december you're gonna see like holland bulbs tulip world eden brothers they're gonna start putting their corms on sale they're gonna be dirt cheap and that is a really good option if you're like a home gardener and you're not selling I find that with those mixes, I bought them, uh, and I would say that you can't beat those prices, but the problem is sometimes they don't come true to color, meaning you get a mix, but you really get orange and yellows. Um, I would say that the quality of them, the corms are typically a little bit smaller. So it kind of just depends on what your objectives are. If you're just growing for fun and you're not selling, like go with those corms. But if you are trying to get a saleable crop, then you probably want to invest in corms that are bred for that purpose. And the corms that I am selling are seven plus, which is um, a bigger size corm. So when you get them, they're going to look shriveled. They're going to look small. But once you, um, once you put them in water and soak them, they are definitely going to plump up. So I will make sure I put that in the link below. Uh, let me know if you have any experiences doing any of the stuff that I'm talking about today. And I will see you in the next video.